King Kenny and the Fox Escape, written by Debbie A. Thomas, illustrated by Jobin Daniel. Dedicated to my precious daughters, Smila and Madison, may your heart always be full of joy and may you always choose to be grateful. Debbie. For Michelle, my muse, my best friend, my wife, I love you. Jobin. There is yet to be another king like King Kenny in all the jungle. King Kenny was chief lion and the ruler as far as one's eyes could see in the wilds. King Kenny's rule was marked in history as a time of peace and harmony, but things weren't always this good. There was a time not too long ago when the great king learned a lesson many of us will learn one way or another. It started on a normal day, a day somewhat like this one. King Kenny was enjoying his morning tea on his royal chair as the sun was rising. The king's leaders came to read books written by previous kings to learn from the lessons they taught. Ahem, the squirrel named Scrooby the scribe cleared his throat. Hey, uh, hey, uh, oh great King Kenny, the kings of old have written to us about what it means to be grateful and are not jealous of what others have. You are wise and you are strong, you are bold and you are brave, yet with your power must come gratefulness, for a thankless heart is a heart always looking for something and is never satisfied. Scribby the scribe and the other animals of the kingdom got out their instruments and began to dance and sing a song about being grateful. Always be grateful and always be kind. For whatever you need will come just in time. Be happy for others. Enjoy what is yours. We'll count our blessings and we'll thank the Lord. Thank you, Scribby, the great king responded. But inside his heart, the king felt he was too good, too perfect, too kingly to be told how to live. In a voice of concern, Scribby the scribe responded, just because you have everything, it does not mean you are grateful. And just because you are king, it does not mean you are kind. It is important to be happy for others and not upset when they have things you may want. That's what being grateful is all about. Just then, the king's commanding officer, a fox named Commander Corby, ran onto the scene. Suddenly, the king's eyes were drawn to this amazing, incredible, glorious cave the commander was wearing. It was flowing back and forth, just dancing with the breezy air. It was blue and studded with jewels. It made Commander Corby look bolder, braver, more beastly, and almost a bit kingly. As Commander Corby began to leave, the king started to want the commander's cape for himself. He went to his closet filled with royal clothes and felt nothing looked as extraordinary as Commander Corby's cave. That night, the king went out onto the balcony in the cool breeze after dinner and saw a glint of blue down below. A few houses down from the king's palace was Commander Corby's home and his rooftop could be seen from the king's balcony. The commander had taken off his cape, washed it and hung it outside to dry on his roof. The king commanded a soldier to wait until the commander fell asleep, then break into his house, climb up to the roof and grab the cape. The soldier did just that and finally the king had the cape he wanted. The next morning he woke up bright and early, ready to wear this beautiful cloth. Oh! How he'd make everyone else in the palace jealous of his new cape, and how he'd make his enemies afraid of his new strong look. But instead of compliments, he heard laughter and whisper. <laughs> Just then, Scribby the scribe came boldly to the king. You stealing the Commander Corby's cape shows you're not grateful or kind. Your disobedience made you steal the cape made for a fox, but you, O oh king, are a lion. It is one too many sizes too small for you, and you look silly wearing it. Angered and upset, the king stormed off and caught a glimpse of himself in his mirror, and there he saw it. 
This glorious decorated regal cape that draped beautifully along the fox's back looked too short, too thin, and too frail for a grown lion to wear. As he tried to remove the cape, the wonderful cloth tore and the beautiful jewels sprinkled all over the floor. The cape was forever ruined and could not be fixed. Suddenly, he realized that what Scribby the scribe said was true. The cape was meant for Commander Corby, a fox, and not for him, a lion. What is meant for one person may make them happy, but this doesn't mean the same thing is meant for everyone. The king ran back to everyone, lifted his head, and let out an apology deep from his heart. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, the king began to say. Though the cape was beyond repair, the king's apology made everything right again. Right away, everyone became full of joy, and King Kenny was now more powerful, strong, and grateful than ever. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more. I hope you learned a very good lesson from this amazing story. Bye-bye. Be good for mommy and daddy.